Okay, in this video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics. And in this problem, we want to know what is the initial velocity needed to achieve a certain amount of total time up and down into the air. In this case, it's 6.5 seconds, and we want to know what initial velocity is needed for that time of flight. So our problem says an arrow. Now, I don't typically just draw an arrow. I just draw either a square or some round object. doesn't matter. A dot. Okay, an arrow is shot straight up in the air. Take 6.5 seconds to come back down. What was the initial velocity of the arrow? That means we're going to take some object, an arrow, project it straight up, stops, comes back down to the same place, takes 6.5 seconds to do that. What must the initial velocity have been to achieve that time? Okay, we're only given explicitly in the problem that the time is 6.5 seconds. Now, I like to first thing get out all five, write down all five of the variables that are in the kinematic equations. Initial, final, change in position, acceleration, and the time. We're told the time is 6.5 seconds. We know, although it's not stated in the problem, we know because this is free fall kinematics that the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. We're asked to find the initial velocity. We don't know the change in position. And you might think you know the final velocity because the object is going to go up and come straight back down. And the initial velocity and the final velocity, the speeds will be the same. The velocities will be in the opposite direction. But we don't know the final velocity because we don't know the initial velocity. Now, how are we going to solve this problem? Because normally, for a free fall kinematic problem, we need to know three of the variables so we can solve for a fourth. Well, we only know two. Well, there is a way we can think about this problem so that we'll know the final velocity. And to do that, we're only going to consider the path of the object from here, the initial velocity, up to the top of its path, to its maximum height. Because when it reaches its maximum height, the final velocity, the speed of the object, the velocity is going to be zero. So we're only going to consider the up portion of the path, and therefore we can say, or we know the initial, excuse me, the final velocity is zero. All right, now you can see we have now three of the variables we're going to solve for the fourth. We've got to change one other thing. Very important, don't forget, we're only considering the up portion of the path. We're given the time is for up and down. The time up is equal to the time down. So the time up and the time down are each half of this. We're only considering the up portion. So therefore, the time we're going to use is 3.25 seconds, half of 6.5. So I'm going to change my time from 6.5 to 3.5 excuse me, 3.25. Now we know three things. We can solve for the fourth. Let's get out our kinematic equations, figure out which one we're going to use. Here are our four kinematic equations. The equation, because we're looking for the initial velocity, has to have the initial velocity. They all have the initial velocity. But the equation that we're going to use also has to have the other three variables that we know. We know the acceleration, the final velocity, and the time. We don't know the change in position. Now you'll notice this equation has the initial velocity. We know the final, we know the time, but we don't know the change in position, so we cannot use this equation. You'll notice the other equations have the initial velocity in them, but this equation and this equation also have the change in position. We don't know the change in position. We can't use this one, we can't use this one. This last equation here, let's see, it has the initial velocity, which we're looking for. We know the acceleration. We know the time. We know the final velocity. This is the equation we're going to use to solve for final velocity because we know the other three variables. So here we go. Let's do it. We're going to rearrange the equation to solve for the initial velocity. Now, first of all, I'll notice that the final velocity is zero. So this term is zero. So I can kind of simplify the equation a little bit. This final velocity is zero. I'm going to solve for the initial velocity. In order to do that, I'm going to subtract acceleration times the time from both sides. And when I do that, I get that the initial velocity is equal to minus the acceleration times the time. I know the acceleration. I know the time. I can just plug my values in. The initial velocity is equal to minus, minus 9.81. You'll see how the minus times a minus is a plus. My initial velocity has to be positive because it's going up. That's the positive direction. Times the time is not 6.5. Remember, it's 3.25. Simply multiply those two together and you get the initial velocity needed to achieve a time in the air of 6.5 seconds. Okay, The initial velocity needed to achieve a time in the air 
of 6.5 seconds, you don't double this or something like that, is 31.9 meters per second. Okay, there you go. That is how you do that problem. Pretty straightforward. You got to remember, cut this in half, your final velocity at the top is zero. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can do all of the following three things, please. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And then subscribe to my channel, get all my physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.